Adios. Now, here's Dominic Carter on Talk Radio 77 WABC. The NRA is too powerful. And you're seeing the pushback that I'm receiving this morning from even suggesting what is necessary in terms of a ban on these assault type weapons. I didn't say a permanent ban, something along the lines of what Bill Clinton did. And after a trial period, if it doesn't work out, let it sunset, basically just like uh, the one under Bill Clinton did. Dominic Carter here with you folks. Good morning on Talk Radio 77 WABC. Let's go to Clarence on Long Island. Good morning, Clarence. What's on your mind? Hey, Dominic. Um, I just want to start off here. I'm a conservative Republican as well. I disagree with the last caller. I'm more on point with Jay. Honestly, I would... I would give the um, assault rifles not a complete ban, but I would regulate it to the NRA to promote, like, I guess, uh, I don't know, not like a well-trained militia, but, like, promote the Second Amendment in a way where people will use it righteously. I mean, I, I, I guess, yeah, I, I, would, I would come to the, to the terms of at least regulating it to that point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not, uh, declaring something permanent, I am saying that because look, the reality, Clarence, is we have a lot of troubled young men in this country, and there it's becoming a copycat situation. And we know, and thank you for the call, Clarence. We know that sadly and tragically, the next troubled young man is probably already paying attention to this. We don't know whether that individual, we don't know where, we don't know whether or not he's going to dress, camouflage himself as a female to try and get away. Think about that part for a second of what this young man uh, did based on the video. It's still alleged everything. Uh, he's not been convicted of anything. But think about for a second what he did in terms of all those people hit and he left disguised as a woman. But I do I do want to take this time to to honor and acknowledge law enforcement. We take them for granted. We take them for granted. Think about it folks. You know, all of the argument from the uh, civil liberty folks of, oh, you, you, you can't have cameras, an invasion of privacy. Imagine where we would be with this case in Highland Park if law enforcement did not have access to cameras. And the police deserve a tremendous pat on the back for the fact of how fast they were able to put this together and have this young man in custody. And then you look at the situation and I see all of your calls. We're going to get to them. I promise the Bronx, Yorktown, Forest Hills, Rockland, New Jersey, Pearl river, Brooklyn, Queens. We're going to get to them. But then we have the situation in, in Ohio, the situation in Ohio where the shooting of Jalen Walker, the African-American young man, and I, I, I don't want to revisit the full argument again tonight, but I was annoyed last night because I don't understand what the community is protesting. It's sad this young man lost his life. It's really, really sad. It's, it's terribly sad. He made the choice to evade the police in the vehicle. He made the choice to bolt the vehicle and run in the middle of the night where the police don't have the vision. He made the choice, whether it was by accident or whether it was um, intentionally to apparently fire a round in the vehicle. Once that gun went off, that's a game changer, a game changer. And this, before I take a break, is what the body cam 
video and the Jalen Walker shooting sounded like. A lot of shots, a lot of shots, uh, but I'm not going to second guess the police officers. I am not going to take the easy, cheap shot and condemn, condemn the officers and say, oh, my God, the amount of shots. I was talking to my best friend today who's law enforcement in Georgia, and he said, Dom, there were eight, and he happens to be African-American. He says, Dom. There were eight cops. That's not a lot of shots when you consider eight cops. And they all have semi-automatic weapons. An aide, an advanced person to Mayor Adams, went through what many of us are experiencing these days. He was robbed at gunpoint. And so a little bit of news out of uh, Pennsylvania The Senate nominee, Dr. Oz, uh, is calling on the mayor of Philadelphia, Jim Kenney to resign after Mayor Kenney said he was looking forward to his term being over so he didn't have to deal with gun violence any longer. Well, Mr. Mayor, if you don't want to deal with the gun violence, why not just let your cops do their job? They're more than willing to do so, but it requires a political spine and having their back. And what a defeatist attitude to have from the mayor of the city. Perhaps we now know why we have the situations that we have from coast to coast. Progressive mayors, kumbaya, kumbaya. They've all been mistreated. Let them run the streets. Let them, I'm talking about citizens, let them do whatever they want. They're the victims. The police are the bad guys. The bad guys, let them run. You want to break the window and steal all the merchandise? Do it. You want to go into CVS and steal all their merchandise? Do it. Because we feel your pain. Now turn out and vote Democratic. And that part is disgusting. Regarding Highland Park, I watched a news conference with Senator Dick Durbin, and here's what he basically said. This was just hours after the shooting. He was in Highland Park at the uh, firehouse, the local firehouse, and he says, well, uh, vote Democratic. Vote Democratic. And if, if you're tired of these gun situations happening, vote Democratic. Folks, you've got to disguise it a little better than that. When you're just trying to, you know, the bodies are still cold. Still warm, I should say. They're still warm. And you're talking about vote Democratic. 